Hey everybody, welcome to the video. It's Monday, April 5th, and we're breaking down this seven-game main slate that we have over on DraftKings, and hopefully you guys had a fantastic holiday weekend, but looking forward to the start of a new week and just breaking down these games each and every single day for you guys. And if you find this video helpful in any way possible, please leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. really do appreciate it. And if you want access to the projections, the ownership projections, the optimizer, rankings, cheat sheet, the Discord community, we got several hundred people over there. So if you want to join, the link is down below for that. Lots of good stuff over there and some extra content. Follow me over on social media, bottom corner of your screen. And if you want a free money bonus up to $50 using code CPEN over on Monkey Knife Fight, instant deposit match. Use the link down below and use code CPEN and tell them I sent you. But I think that's it for the shameless plug. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. And as per usual, we will start with the pitching. And I just want to say the state of the slate when it comes to pitching is just absolutely awful. Like, yes, we have Jacob DeGrom. He's the clear ace of the slate. And the reason he's pitching is because that the Mets haven't played a game yet. Like, most teams are on their fourth or fifth game, so they're in the back end of the rotation using their fourth or fifth pitchers. Mets, they still haven't played yet, so Jacob DeGrom is going to make his first start of the season. But besides DeGrom, it gets bad quick. Like, we're looking at guys like Sheffield, Waka, and Rodon that I think are the best SP2s in this slate. Also, think Nick Pavetta, of all people, might end up being a little bit popular today just to try to maybe chase some strikeout upside versus the Tampa Bay Rays, who do strike out a lot versus righties, but we know his command issues and he can give up plenty of power. It's not like he's pitching in a very pitcher-friendly park as well. So it's going to be a really interesting SP2 slate because I could see any of these guys picking up ownership. I'm kind of curious to see who's going to be the chalky SP2. I feel like as of right now, it could be Carlos Rodon. He's actually the guy that's popping up for me in projections for my SP2 today. But even then, I don't love it. But I guess it is a softer matchup versus Seattle. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. So let's start with our ace of the slate. Jacob deGrom, $10,700. I'd probably be playing him if he was close to $12,000 with the way this slate is. He is just by far, I mean by far, the best pitcher on this slate. I know the matchup versus Philly isn't exactly great. But there's some strikeout upside here. I mean, Jacob DeGrom's arguably the best pitcher in baseball. He's got around a 40% K rate last year, a 2.38 XFIP. And we saw Ian Anderson have success versus them yesterday. He got plenty of strikeouts. I know he gave up a run or two, but he still had a really solid game overall. Didn't pick up the win, but Jacob DeGrom, I mean, he's in just a really good spot. Implied team total of 2.89 against him, which is by far the lowest on the slate. Very heavy favorite here. Seven strikeout prop over in Vegas. Wouldn't be surprised if he got over that. Doesn't give up much power. Doesn't really walk guys too much. And like I mentioned earlier, that strikeout rate close to 40. So I don't see anything wrong here with Jacob DeGrom, maybe besides the matchup being a little bit tougher versus Philly. But with the way pitching is on this slate, you're playing him, you're locking him in in cash games. If you fade Jacob DeGrom in cash games, I honestly don't know what to tell you. Even if he got negative 30 points in this game, it's not going to matter because he's going to be close to 100% owned. And if you don't have him in cash and he just comes out and scores 40 points, you're probably dead unless all of your offensive pieces go off. So in cash games, you play DeGrom. Obviously, you can get leverage in tournaments because he's going to be probably the highest owned player on the entire slate unless some news comes out where there's a cheap hitter hitting somewhere. But Jacob DeGrom is probably going to be the chalkiest guy on this site. So yes, there's leverage to be had in tournaments to go underweight on him or just completely fade him in a single entry because it's going to be a very bold move, but it can work out. Would I recommend doing that? Probably not because I just want to play Jacob DeGrom everywhere today, and I'm sure you guys do as well. Then after that, it gets a little bit harder to talk about these guys. We're going to start with Sheffield here at $7,500. I like his upside. He is a talented pitcher, and he had a pretty good season last year as well. A 3.58 ERA paired with a 4.27 XFIP, which is a little bit higher, but relative to the other pitchers on the slate, it's not that bad. A strikeout rate above 20%. Walks are a bit of an issue, but he didn't give up any power whatsoever. A .053 ISO, only a 304 slugging and a 285 Woba. Those numbers are kind of on par with Jacob DeGrom. I'm not saying they're quite his level, but they're not that far off. Had a lot of ground balls, a 50% ground ball rate, 28% ball rate and that's what I like out of my pitchers I want them to keep the ball on the ground because when the ball's in the air a lot obviously home runs can happen but Sheffield was pretty good with that last year only allowed a uh, 0.33 home runs per nine innings which was actually lower than Jacob DeGrom I'm not saying he's as good as Jacob DeGrom and the sample size isn't quite as big but versus the Chicago White Sox don't love the matchup we know the White Sox have plenty of power and if you're looking at their splits versus lefties last season they were pretty good so I'm not like super excited about it here 21% K rate double digit walk rate 238 ISO, 142 WRC plus. These are some pretty darn good numbers, so it's not like I'm chasing the matchup here, but with the pitching options we have in the slate, he actually doesn't look the worst. A team total of 4.41 against him, which again, 
not great on a usual slate, but on this slate, it's not that bad. So I think he's a viable SP2, but that's really as far as I would go with it. Michael Waka, 7200 bucks, pitching for the Tampa Bay Rays against the Boston Red Sox, who have been pretty cold to start the season. I know J.D. Martinez has been pretty hot, but trust me, I've been rostering Boston the first few games, and really, they haven't done much for me whatsoever outside J.D. Martinez. I know he had an ERA above 6.6 .6 last year, but his XFIP was all the way down to 4.3, which is still not great, but it's not that bad. 24% K rate, didn't really walk guys too much. Does give up plenty of power, so that's something that we're going to have to watch out for. A lot of hard contact and 2.38 home runs per nine innings, so I don't think he's going to absolutely mow down this lineup, but with the way they've been hitting so far this season, I think we could probably see maybe a handful of strikeouts for Waka. Goes around five innings, gives up a couple of runs, and at $7,200, but relative to how the other pitchers are on the slate, I don't think he'll be too upset with that. So I do think he is a viable option. And I do think he can pick up the win as well if he can go to five innings. So I do think the Rays are a pretty strong stack on this slate. And then Carlos Rodon, he's below 7K, and I think he's going to be your chalky SP2. He is a slight favorite here. He only has a team total of... He only has a team total of 4.09 against him, which is pretty low compared to the other SP2s that we have. He has a strikeout prop close to 5, and I know the numbers last year weren't great, but it's only a 7-inning sample size, and he didn't really pitch as a starter last year. It was a really much more of a relief role. And he only had a 17% K rate there, a 6.21 XFIP, and some overall pretty horrendous numbers. But if he can just get us a few innings here, 4 to 5 innings, maybe 6 if he happens to be super, super efficient, I don't hate it. The matchup versus Seattle wasn't that bad. Versus lefties, they did struggle last year with a 27.3% K rate, a 141 ISO, only a 190 batting average, and a 072 WRC+. Plus. So they really struggled versus lefties last year. Obviously, there's, there's some new pieces, and they move things around. But overall, this isn't a team I'd be too scared of about lefties. I think Mitch Hanniger is a pretty good play over on Seattle. But outside of him, I'm not really too interested in their lineup. So Rodon... I think he's going to be your chalky SP2 today, and I can see DeGrom and Rodon being the popular pairing in cash. As of right now, I'm recording this in the morning, so I might change my thought process on that later in the days. As we just see that the news that falls, but as of right now, it might be looking like the decent way to go, because you're only paying around, what, $17,000 for pitching if you go that route, so you can definitely afford some bats, but yeah, it's kind of it for the pitching. Again, not a fun pitching slate outside of Jacob DeGrom, but we'll work our way through it, and I think we can move on to the bats at this point. And we'll start up top with catcher. We have Wilson Contreras, probably going to be leading off here versus lefty at nearly 5000 bucks. Very expensive, but I was looking at the weather in Wrigley Field. Not excessive winds, but it looks like it might be blowing out around 10 miles per hour out and a little bit too left. So that's going to play in their favor for hitting once again. It's not going to be insane winds, so don't think their team total is going to be above 6 or anything. But I could see them having a pretty decently high total. It wouldn't surprise me. If it did get above five against Brett Anderson, not a pitcher that I really get too scared of. He's a low strikeout guy for the most part. Doesn't really miss too many bats. Doesn't walk a lot of guys either. So he's going to give you pitches to hit. And if they can get those in the air, which might be a little bit of a challenge versus Anderson because he's a high ground ball guy. If we actually go look at his splits really quick, he had a 57% ground ball rate last year compared to a 26% fly ball rate and some pretty good ratios overall, but only a 16% carry and a 5% walk rate. So like I said, he doesn't really get many strikeouts, but he doesn't walk a lot of guys, and he doesn't give up a lot of fly balls either. So he does pitch to contact, and he likes getting those ground ball outs. But if the Cubs can get this ball in the air, it might travel a little bit, and I wouldn't be surprised if they had a pretty decent game. So I, they are an offense that I am looking to target here, and I wouldn't be surprised if their team total approaches five or maybe gets above that, making it one of the highest on the entire slate. But Contreras, he smashes lefties, so I do think he's in a pretty good spot here. If you are spinning up, for the catcher position, which I probably won't end up doing, maybe outside of Cub stacks, but I do think he is certainly viable. The Nierman Mercedes here at $3,000. I think I'm pronouncing his name right, but he has been on absolute fire to start the season. Now, we could look at his numbers from last year, but he had one plate appearance total, so that's a complete waste of time. But to start the season so far, he's been amazing. I know two, two games ago, he had a great day. Then the last game, he had a pretty good day as well. I think he homered. I think that's when he was like 70% in cash games, but yeah, at 3000 bucks, he's going to be facing a lefty. I know I said I like Sheffield here. I think he's an interesting option, but we're going to be targeting some bats against our SP2s now. Probably not in the lineups that we have them, but in the lineups you don't have them. So say you don't have Rodon in one lineup, you can use some Seattle Mariners, but if you have Rodon, I'd probably shy away from using the Mariners and probably pick on the other SP2 that you don't have in your lineup. But at 3000 bucks, he's been hot. I feel like he's going to end up being pretty popular once again in that ready on lefty matchup. So he definitely makes some sense to me. Then Omar Narvaez at 2900 bucks. Looks like the wind's going to be blown out a little bit in Wrigley. Again, like I said, nothing too excessive. But Trevor Williams is a guy that we can target against. He is not the best pitcher in the world. And Williams actually might be a somewhat viable option here because the Brewers do strike out a ton versus righties. But 
He's not a big strikeout guy for the most part. I know last year he kind of cleaned it up versus lefties. He was much worse versus righties than he was versus lefties. But in seasons past, Trevor Williams was the guy that really struggled versus left-handed bats, could not strike those guys out, gave him plenty of power. So we're going to see if that switches back to that because it was an abbreviated season last year. But I will say the splits were worse versus righties than lefties. But Narvaez is always a fine option for cheap. He's going to have that platoon advantage as a lefty versus righty here. And his numbers versus righties weren't great last year. Only a 101 ISO, a 64 WRC plus, and a strikeout rate of nearly 30%. But he did walk quite a bit, but... Narvaez is a guy, he's just, he's a cheap catcher, he's viable, it should be good hitting conditions, and he's got the platoon advantage there, so if you need a cheap catcher, he's on the list, but it's nothing too exciting, and really none of these bats are super exciting today, we don't have course field, we don't have like any elite spots, but there are some viable options, and then dropping out of first base, he's also eligible at second base as well, but Kesson here here at 4400 bucks. he was a guy past couple of seasons that really smashes right-handed pitching and like I mentioned earlier Trevor Williams was a lot worse versus righties last year than he was versus lefties if we can just pull up his splits really quick so Trevor Williams versus righties last season a 9.53 ERA a 5.56 xFIP a strikeout rate under 20% walk rate close to 10 a 364 ISO given up a 708 slugging and a 453 Woba with a pretty poor K uh, strike out the walk ratio so I think all the Brewers are totally in play here versus lefties again he cleaned his numbers up a little bit had a 3.86 ERA pair with a 4.72 xFIP but still a strikeout rate below 20% so I think the entire lineup is viable here I think they're actually one of the better stacks on this slate even though I don't really like using the Brewers too much but here's a guy that's got plenty of pop in his bat versus righties as well so I think he is totally viable in a position that's not that great more so talking about second base. Even first base isn't that great as well either today. And then going down to Yoshi here, he's below 3000 bucks. Should be leading off versus the righty and Nick Pavetta. And I like the Rays a lot today. They're in a hitter-friendly park. It's definitely an upgrade from where the Trop is in Boston. But they have one of the higher implied team totals in the entire slate right now, close to five. And this is a team that does strike out a lot versus right-handed pitching. And Nick Pavetta does have some strikeout upside, but he can give up plenty of power. He did struggle in a couple of spring starts. So I think the Rays are one of the best stacks here. They're not overly expensive. As you can see, we have Kiermaier at $3,000, a bit lower than me. Austin Meadows isn't super expensive as well. So we can definitely stack up these Tampa Bay Rays. And just as a leadoff guy, below 3000 bucks on a stack that I think is pretty good. And they're on the road, so you get those guaranteed ninth inning at-bats. I think Yoshi's a very, very solid play at first base today. Then Andrew Vaughn, $2,500. We know the potential's there, and he's facing a lefty and righty on lefty matchup, so you get the platoon advantage there. He's got plenty of upside, so I think he's fine at $2,500. He's also eligible in the outfield as well. But again, if you are going to play Sheffield, I'd probably shy away from using guys like Vaughn, Jose Abreu, and those kind of guys from the Chicago White Sox today because it doesn't really make too much sense to stack against your pitcher. Dropping on a second base here, we have another Tampa Bay Ray, but I really like them as a stack today. I do think Pavetta could pick up some ownership, but I really like being on the other side of that because I do think the Rays can put up plenty of runs here. I know they are a team that strikes out a lot versus righties, but a lot of these guys have some decent power versus righties as well. If you look at Brandon Lau's numbers last year versus right-handed pitching, he was good versus lefties as well, but he had a 355 Woba, a 238 ISO, a 130 WRC plus, a slugging close to 500, an OPS close to 1,000 as well. Now you get to pair that with a near 27% strikeout rate, but I do think he's a pretty solid option there. It's a hitter from the park, a big upgrade from where they usually are in Tampa, so I think he makes plenty of sense. I know he's a bit expensive at 4800 bucks, but we shouldn't have to find value everywhere today. I know DeGrom's pretty expensive, but we can get a cheaper SP too, so I don't think we're going to be really hurting for cash too much. Then Colton Wong, $3,700, should be leading off with the wind blowing out in Chicago versus Trevor Williams. He's not a big power guy, but he doesn't really strike out too much. He knows how to get contact. Looking at his splits versus righties last year, 259 batting average, 307 Woba, very low ISO, but some overall halfway decent numbers, only 15% strikeout rate, walk rate in the double digits as well. So he's just a fine cheap option of what should be some decent hitting conditions. Not saying they're going to be super duper elite hitting conditions today, but 3,700 leading off versus Trevor Williams, who's historically struggled versus lefties. Not really a big strikeout guy. I think he makes plenty of sense. Should be able to make contact on the bat, just a matter if it misses the gloves in the outfield. And then Jake Cronenberg, $3,400. He was the guy that was really good versus right-handed pitching last season. Didn't really strike out too much and had a decent amount of pop versus them as well. Only a 12% K rate, a 156 WRC plus a 400 Woba and a 316 batting average with a 2 65 ISO and Anthony Discofani he's a guy that has some pretty decent splits versus right-handed pitching but he really struggles with the lefties last year a 6.55 xFIP versus them with a 7.45 ERA 13% strike rate and 11% walk rate and a 333 batting average given up with over a 230 ISO now his numbers versus righties 
they do get a bit better. I know it's still not great, but over the course of his career, I know last year was a smaller sample size, so I hate to look into it too much, but he's always been a bit tougher on, on righties as he doesn't really allow too many walks versus them. He tends to have the power a lot lower and all the other statistical numbers as well. And that stayed true last year. It just was on a smaller sample size, but he was still not that great versus righties. So you could stack the Padres up, but I do prefer the lefties here versus Descalfani. So I think Eric Hosmer, who we didn't really talk about, is certainly in play as well if you want to go a little bit more expensive at first base. Then dropping out third base, Alex Bregman at 5,500. But I wouldn't say I want to use too many Astros on the slate versus Jose Quintana. He's not the worst pitcher out there, but Alex Bregman is a lefty crusher. He has elite numbers versus them. He's already homered versus lefty this year already and he had a 411 on base percentage versus them last year at 167 wrc plus over a 400 woba good batting average good power all the good stuff when only a seven percent strikeout rate as well so alex Wegman, he's fine as a one-off but i don't really want to target too many astros on the slate i just think he's fine for a decent home run call i know he's expensive though but I think he's viable. Then Chris Bryant versus a lefty, $5,100. He's already homered versus a lefty with the wind blowing out so far this season. Anderson, he's a guy that's hard to get the ball in the air versus him, but Chris Bryant's a very talented hitter. He's got great numbers versus lefties. Only a 14% strikeout rate, a 430 on base percentage, a good WRC+, plus, good Woba, good batting average. Pretty much checks all the boxes. The power is a little bit lower than it usually should be last year but 5100 bucks i think the cups are one of the better offenses to target on this slate so brian makes plenty of sense to me then on the opposite side of this game we have travis shot for 300 bucks i've already mentioned the things with trevor williams so far so i won't say it once again just to sound repetitive but travis shaw he's a guy that you know he will strike out quite a bit but he does have some decent pop versus right-handed pitching looking at his numbers last year 412 slugging 307 woba and your 200 iso or a really high fly ball rate as well doesn't really have the ball on the ground too much versus right-handed pitching so i think he's fine it's maybe a mid-range home run call and i do like the brewers today so he'd be part of a stack as well then dropping to the shortstop you could throw the in here as well i wasn't super high on him i'd rather play Corey seager and javier baez but if you are stacking the padres obviously you can't leave off guys like manny machado or fernando tatis even though that i don't have them on here because i'm not really talking too much about stacks here just mainly individual plays for the most part but Corey Seager you guys know I love playing Corey Seager I'll play him every chance I get I think I've played him every single slate so far I think yeah there hasn't been a slate yet that I haven't played Corey Seager besides Sunday actually because he wasn't on the main slate but if you played the afternoon slate and things like that you could have easily played Corey Seager as well but the guy just crushes right-handed pitching last year he was a stat cast darling in that category and he's once again this year he's crushing it but looking at last year's numbers a thousand OPS versus them, nearly a 400 on base percentage, a 622 slugging, a 166 WRC plus, a batting average over 320 to 416 Woba. I'm not sure what else you want from Corey Seager. But his splits versus lefties last year were pretty darn bad. I know he had a 21% carry, but a 12% walk rate, a 6.41 xFIP given up with a 9.13 ERA, 350 batting average, 630 slugging, 444 Woba, and a 280 ISO. Yeah, you can use some lefties here versus Frankie Montas. And I know we don't have too many Dodgers listed, but you can stack the Dodgers again. I have no problem with that. It's just individually they're pretty expensive and they're not in course field anymore, so the luster kind of dies down. But you can certainly target guys like Max Muncy, Mookie Betts, Corey Seager, Cody Bellinger, Justin Turner. Just because they're not on here doesn't mean I don't think they're viable plays. I just don't want to list the entire slate because that's going to take forever, and it does you guys no good. But just know you can play all the Dodgers. No problems at all here. It's just Oakland's not the best hitting park in the world. They still have a team total close to five, but it's definitely a big downgrade from Coors Field. And Javier Baez, for reasons I mentioned earlier with Chris Bryant, he hits lefties very well. Now, he chases every single pitch. I think he only has a like a 2% walk rate, and he strikes out a ton, nearly 30% of the time. But he's got plenty of power versus lefties, so he's definitely viable. He also has some stolen base upside as well. For the record, this is typically a position I spend up for, so I'm not really looking for value plays too much at shortstop, but there are some guys out there that are you know, they're hitting near the bottom of the order, but they are viable just if you need to go cheap at shortstop. But it's a position I typically do spend up for. I think I've done that every single time because I paid up for Xander Bogarts on the Sunday slate. I know he did nothing, but again, he was very expensive as well. Just typically a position because there's always value at catcher. First base, second base, you can find some value as well. And then in the outfield, there's always value. So it's typically, I'm always usually spending up for third base and shortstop, but just kind of how the lineups usually fall for the most part. But anyway, starting out with the outfield, we have Christian Yelich, 5,500 bucks. I know last year was not a great season for me didn't really hit that well he had a 205 batting average still had some decent pop at 225 ice so 113 wrc plus and a 356 on base percentage but he struck out a ton 30 percent k rate only had a three percent walk rate as well so definitely not something i'd expect from christian yelich but we know he's still one of the best hitters in baseball he was on an absolute tear in 2019 and 
Trevor Williams doesn't scare me. I already mentioned him earlier. He's historically struggled versus lefty. It looks like the wind is going to be blowing out a bit here in Chicago, so that's good hitting conditions. So I think the Brewers are one of the better offenses to target on this slate, and he's one of my favorite spend-up outfitters. I know you can still play Cody Bellinger. I didn't have him listed here, but all the Dodgers are viable, but Christian Yelich just stand out as a pretty decent play for me here. Austin Meadows at 4400 bucks. I don't want to call anyone a core play yet in the morning, but it's looking like Austin Meadows is going to be one of the better plays in the entire slate. Nick Pavetta just struggles versus lefties and righties in terms of power. He does have a little bit of strikeout upside, and these Tampa Bay Rays do strike out quite a bit versus right-handed pitching. Last year, Meadows had a 32.9% K rate, but he started the season hot. He's got a couple home runs so far. I feel like his price is a little bit too low. He's going to be near the top of the order for one of the best offenses to target today, in my opinion. You get a park upgrade in Boston, so I like Austin Meadows quite a bit. Probably one of my more favorite plays on the entire slate. Mitch Hanniger, 3200 bucks. If you're not using Carlos Rodon, I like getting to Mitch Hanniger. He did have a home run a couple days ago. He's only 3200 bucks. He's got power versus lefties. He didn't play last year, so we don't have any numbers to look at in that department, but he's had a decent start to the season so far, and I feel like he's a little bit too cheap for his leadoff position and as talented as he is. Then going down to Kevin Kiermeyer, he's kind of like the great value version of Austin Meadows, but he's still a fine option here. He's going to be hitting a little bit lower in the order, but at 3000 bucks, he does great as one of the better value bats in the outfield on the entire slate. He did still strike out quite a bit versus righties. He doesn't have a ton of power. Last year, he had a 145 bison and a 301 wool, but not the worst numbers out there. A 26% carry and a double-digit walk rate, but again, I just like getting cheap bats here versus Nick Pavetta on the Tampa Bay Rays offense. I really do like to target today, especially if Pavetta is going to have any ownership because I because I just have a feeling some people are going to play him. I'm not really sure if that feeling is right, but if people are playing, I really like stacking against them just to get leverage there. Although I do think the Tampa Bay Rays are going to be a popular stack as well. So it's a really interesting conundrum in my opinion because I could see it going both ways because there's some strikeout upside here. It's just I feel like there's a lot of power downside for Pavetta as well. Then Jake Marisnik, 2600 bucks. If the wind keeps blowing out here, he's just a cheap righty on lefty matchup here versus Brett Anderson. Obviously, there's pinch hit risk here, but if you're looking at his numbers versus left-handed pitching last season, there's only a 17 plate appearance sample size, but he had a 313 ISO, a 195 WRC plus, an OPS over 1,000, didn't really strike out too much, 375 batting average, and some overall really strong numbers. Again, pinch hit risk, but he's 2600 bucks on an offense that I do like quite a bit on this site but that's going to be it for the video guys i hope it was helpful and if it was make sure you leave a like and leave your comments down below if you have any questions subscribe to the channel if you're new hit that notification bell if you want to help support the channel over on patreon link is down below for that for the projections the optimizer ownership projections rankings cheat sheet discord chat community whatever you want to call it, it is all there free money bonus up to 50 dollars on over on monkey knife fight using code c pen but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to get ahead of you guys. Hope you guys enjoy the start to your week. Hopefully, wherever you live, there's some great weather. and Enjoy the rest of your day.